How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over a problem called Unique Paths and this is a question that's currently being asked by Amazon. So today guys our question is Unique Paths. This is a question that's being asked by Amazon. Our problem description says a robot is located at the top left corner of an M by N grid. Mark start in the diagram below. The robot can only move either down or right at any point. The robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid, marks, marked with the finish in the diagram below. How many unique possible paths are there? And so here we have an example. So if M was 3 and N was 2, our output would be 3, meaning there are three different ways to get to the bottom right hand corner. And the explanation is from the top left corner, there's only a total of three ways to reach the bottom right corner. Our first path is right, right, down. Our second path is right, down, right and our third path is down, right, right. So here's another example if you guys wanna kinda of reason through this one. But the general idea here is that we wanna know how many unique paths there are from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of a grid. And this grid is n by n. And what this problem really boils down to is how many different ways can we reach each of these different cells? And we're told that our restriction is that we can either move down or right at every single iteration. So. If we could take this problem and break it down to a smaller problem, it becomes a lot easier. So instead of starting from the top left corner and trying to get to the bottom right corner, we can try and solve this problem using dynamic programming and basically break our subproblems into each of the grids. So instead of our question being, okay, how many different ways can we get from the top left corner to the bottom right? Let's make it how many ways from the start or the top left corner can we get to the square to the right of the start? And that would just be one right, because we can only go right and then we're there. And so let's check for the cell below the start, right? We can only move down and then we're done. So there's one way to get to each of those cells. Now let's say we're trying to go diagonally to, and let's say our start is instead one move diagonally. Well, we can only move right and we can only move down. So we can only go right and then down or we can only go down and then right. So there's only two ways to reach the cell diagonal from the top left corner. And so if we take that logic and expand on it, we can actually solve this using dynamic programming to try and figure out that larger subproblem based off all the smaller subproblems. So I think an easy way to start with this is because we can only move right and down, if we want to say get to the last column, the only way we could actually do that, right, if we want to stay at the top row, is move all the way right. And so there's only one way to each reach each of those cells, right, in the same way for down. So if we can only go down, and we want to stay on the same column, the only way that we can go all the way to any of the cells below us or just go straight down. So really our dynamic programming matrix right now for all those cells just looks like a bunch of ones and a bunch of ones. And so now if we actually build off of that matrix, we can actually compute all the other subproblems. So hopefully this is making sense, but as we go through it, I think it'll become more clear. So let's start writing our code. So the first thing we want is actually DP matrix to keep track of all the different ways that we can reach the cells on the way to the destination cell. So we're gonna say int DP equals new int M by N, right? Because our grid is M by N. And now we said, okay, if we're only allowed to move right and down, that means that the whole first column, the only way we can reach any of those cells is just go by going down. So there's only one unique way to reach any of those cells. And same thing for the first column, or the first row, sorry. We can only reach any of the cells just by going over to the right. So we could actually just fill those cells as ones. So we're gonna say for int i equals zero, well i is less than dp dot length, i plus plus. Now we'll say dp of i zero equals one. And again, this is just saying that for every row to get to the zeroth column of each of those rows, there's only one way to do it, which is just by going straight down from the start. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for all the columns in the first row. So we're going to say for int i equals zero, while well, i is less than dp zero dot length, i plus plus, and we're going to say dp of zero, i equals one. So now our dp array is all zeros, it's m by n, it's all zeros, except the first column is all ones and the first row is all ones. So now what we're going to ask is, okay, from any cell that we're currently on, where could we have come from, right? So for any cell, that we're currently on, we had to have come from above or from our left, right? Because that's the only way we can move down, the opposites, down and right. So for any cell we're on, we had to have come from above us or to the left of us. So we can actually use that to compute 
how many ways there are to get to the cell that we're on, right? So it's however many ways there were to come from above us and from the left. So we can actually leverage that to just solve the rest of the matrix. So we can say four int i equals one, because we've already filled the, the zeroth row. Well, i is less than dp dot length, i plus plus. And then we could say four int j equals one, again, because we've already filled the first columns with ones, so we don't really care about that. Now for I, uh, j equals one, well, j is less than dp dot length, or I should say really dp i dot length, j plus plus. And now we just wanna add the however many ways there are to get to the cell that we're on, right? So dp of ij, which again just represents how many ways we can get to the current cell, is going to be equal to however many ways there are to get to the cell above us and to the left of us, because again, those are the only ways we could have come from. So we're gonna say dp of ij equals dp of i minus one j plus dp of i j minus one. So this cell here is gonna be the cell above us, and this cell here is going to be the cell to the left of us. And finally, when this loop terminates, we actually have filled our entire matrix. And what we really wanna know is, okay, how many ways are there to get to the bottom right-hand corner, right? And so that should be stored in our DP array, right? Because that's what that represents. Anything in our DP array is how many unique ways there are to get to that cell. So if I just return DP of M minus one, N minus one, we should actually get the answer. So let's make sure that this works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, if that was helpful, if that helped you understand dynamic programming at all, do me a favor, leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.